Hi everyone, before we begin, I would like to emphasize that this video is separate from my work and is part of my desire and effort to bring zero cost information to developers. So in this video, I will try to show you how to use Bazelisk. Uh, first of all, what is Bazelisk? It's uh, simply a wrapper around Bazel. Uh, it used to be written in Python and now it's written in Go. It automatically downloads Bazel, so you don't need to take care of that. Uh, it will auto also automatically pick the right version of Bazel. Uh, based on some file you have in your repository or based on of some environment variable. And it also can be used as a replacement, a direct replacement to Bazel uh, command line interface. So how to use it? Uh, one of the recommended ways, there are different ways. Uh, the one you will re uh, read on the Bazelisk GitHub page is actually to add directly Bazelisk to your path environment variable as both Bazelisk and Bazel. With that, you can use Bazel or Bazelisk the same way uh, on your local machine. So let's see how to do that. I will try to show you how to use uh, Bazelisk. So first of all, we need to download it. We'll uh, fetch it from GitHub with a wget. I will use the latest version as of today, which is the 1.15.0. Then we need to give it executable permissions. So chmod.plus, plus x, sorry. And then we can move it to a user bin. And this is basically what um, the, the Mac OS and Windows um, installer are doing. They just move it to the path. And we can also create a symlink. Um, pointing to a target called Bazel, meaning that whenever we will use Bazel now, we'll actually use Bazelisk because it's underneath actually a wrapper to Bazel. So let's try it now. We run Bazelisk minus mains version. It uh, used the 5.3.2 version, which is the latest at the moment. If we run Bazel, we expect the same because it's actually a same link. So now let's see how to um, use Bazelisk uh, to use the specific version in our workspace. So let's say we have like uh, the most simple workspace you can have, just a workspace file. Um, for that, now we need to create a dot .bazel version file and just to write the version we want to use. So we'll try and to use the 5.0.0. And when we run now bazel or bazelisk, it will automatically read this file and fetch uh, the bazel version. And here you see it's using the right one. Um, normally, you might see that it's actually downloading the version here, but since I already have it on my system, it doesn't need to. So now we saw how to add Bazelisk to the path environment. Um, this is great, but it has limitation. Uh, if you use CI, for example, it will not scale. Uh, an idea then will be to um, check it Bazel Bazelisk directly on your repository. Um, so this also has limitation because First of all, it's not uh, really recommended to check in a binary into your uh, GitHub repository. Also, it's very specific to your OS architecture. Bazelisk is a binary that runs on a specific OS and architecture, uh, which might not be the same um, in CI. And also, if you run locally, uh, if someone wants to use uh, Bazel in your repository, it might it will not pick the right version, so it will not. Uh, work with Bazelisk. So for that, you can actually, um, instead of checking in into um, the root directory, you can check it in until into a file called tools slash Bazel. So this is a very specific path in Bazel, uh, in any Bazel workspace. Um, so whenever you will run Bazel in your workspace, it will first look at this path and check if there is a file. If there is, it will run this file instead, meaning that whenever someone runs Bazel in your directory, it will run, in that case, Bazelisk. So this is nice. It's already an improvement. <clears throat> but still, it's very specific to your OS and architecture I mentioned before. So one of the best way and recommended way is actually to use um, <clears throat> um, a script, a wrapper script uh, under tool Bazel that will actually download Bazelisk and run it. That way you can download the actual version that is required by your host here. And in that way you can run Bazel or tools Bazel 
uh, interchangeably whenever and wherever you are. This will work in your local machine or in CI. And this is quite simple to achieve. Um, so here is a quick uh, snippet on how this uh, tool's Bazel script can look like. It can just look at um, whether you have a Bazelisk version installed. So let's say we want to put it under tools Bazelisk. If it doesn't exist, it will download it and unpack it. And then when you have it, it will just run it and pass through the command line arguments to this tool. And that's all. So let's see how to do that. So now I will show you how to use Bazelisk as a wrapper script that we will uh, wrap inside a script called tools uh, slash Bazel. So this is a very special path for any repository uh, using Bazel because whenever you run Bazel within this repository, it will first look whether there is a script at this path. And if so, it will use this instead of a Bazel tool. And this is what we want because we want to run Bazelisk instead of Bazel in that case. So here I created an empty file uh, called Bazel here under tools. Uh, we'll first, uh, yeah, it's a bash script. Um, let's get uh, the actual directory path of this file so we can use it later. Now we'll check uh, if there is a file called Bazelisk in this directory. If not, we'll download it. Um, at this path, so we'll use the same actually um, download link that we used just before in the example. And we will change uh, the mode, so the permission of this file, so we can execute it. And once we have it, we can just run the script and pass through all the command line arguments to the script. So that's all. Uh, we can now also add a git ignore to ignore actually the Bazelisk file to make sure it's not uh, checked out with our repository. And we can just try now. So tools, Bazel version. All right, as you saw, so it actually download um, uh, Bazel because Bazel is because it was not there under tools Bazel. And now it's actually there. So this is the binary. And it's actually run Bazel. So we have version 5.0 as described in this uh, Bazel version. And now if we run it again, it should not download it, but uh, simply uh, execute it. All right, that's all. So this is a very uh, common and uh, nice way to have a wrapper script to use in CI, for example, because there you don't have Bazel installed and you can directly use uh, this tool Bazelisk or this tool Bazel path to um, run all your Bazel script, as it Bazel will be automatically downloaded from there. And if not, if you use just Bazel, it will also use this script underneath. So if you like this video, uh, please subscribe and thank you for watching.